here we go. What is the atom? So what's the problem with the current state of the web? The problem is that we have all these different apps and they are their own silos. Um, and it's even worse that we have different user accounts for all these different apps and they basically gatekeep our data um, and then even have to monetize somehow on it. And Adam wants to change this um, by using the agent-centric paradigm, which means that agents are represented as a base fundamental thing. Mm. Um, which means the agent, the account, is now with me on my machine, my computer, and Adam defines these different social spaces as something separate from apps. But apps, Adam apps, can now connect to these different social spaces that we call neighborhoods and get access to that data if I grant them. So the data is stored on my machine. So I have an Adam node running here on my machine. Um, and I also have an app in the browser, Flux. So apps UIs can just, can just be regular web UIs that connect to Adam locally. So when I click Authorize here, this, um, well, this browser window uh, opens a localhost connection to my Adam node here and requests access. So I have to say, okay, Flux, I grant access, and then I copy paste this code over. And here we go, Flux now has access to these, it already finds these four different called neighborhoods, these social spaces, because I joined them before. Okay. Live, do you want to take us through Flux? So the first thing I can do is uh, this is kind of my, my start screen, my profile. Uh, I don't have any communities yet, so I will create one, but I can also join an existing one if I have a link. Um, so I will do that. And basically when you create a neighborhood, you're creating, uh, or a community, you're creating, um, a kind of private network that you can invite other agents to participate in. And, and this private network can really be built on anything. We built the first, uh, implementation through Holochain, but in theory, you could build any kind of, uh, you could use any kind of network, uh, like a peer to peer network or even Google cloud services or any other kind of technology to handle this communication between agents. So, and this is, this is maybe the, the main framing for Adam. It's, it's a layer, it's a spanning layer, um, for the internet where we have these different protocols, these different, um, technologies wrapped in what Adam calls a language. Um, and then um, perspectives or neighborhoods that are the spaces that, that apps have access to. But Adam sits in between and defines user accounts and social spaces as something that's just for in the web. It's, it's a new agent-centric layer for the web. And, and right now we fetched uh, the official plugins that you can add to a channel. And this is one of the major features of uh, Flux, but also Adam that we will show a bit later as well, um, is this interoperability and extensibility of the network. So right now we have these different plugins that are official um, plugins from, from Flux. We have a graph view, table view, Kanban, different things. And this is very powerful because we have our official plugins, but we also have community ones. So anyone in the community could basically create a plugin for Flux, but also in general for any Atom app. Uh, and it makes any community or any digital space you have really extensible by being able to interact with all these different plugins. So let's say you have a, a social space that is very interested in chess. You could uh, install or even develop your own chess game. And all the people who are participating in this social group that have access to be able to interact in that specific way. So I will add some, some plugins here. I'll add a chat and a Kanban board and a graph just to showcase a little bit of different things. So this is 
the data that we have in this uh, channel right now. Right now, it's just um, the different apps that we downloaded or installed. We have a table view. We have a Kanban. So I can create a task, put it over here, have a chat. I need to refresh this. Hello. Um, Do you want to show on the graph the, the hello? Just so to yes. make clear that um, this graph is, is all the data in the neighborhood. Um, so Adam calls these perspectives, the neighborhoods are basically just shared perspectives. They are graphs, so it's similar to a semantic web. And each node is an expression of an Adam language. So like for instance... Here you can see this task in the Kanban board, which I just added here, and it's in the state of doing. I can put that to done. And then we can go here and we can see the state of the task. I think it needs a refresh to actually see it. Um, the table view also can access the same data. So we can go into the table view and see the tasks that we have. We can interact with that, go to doing, and then see that that got moved. So this is like a simple example of how these different plugins are really interacting with the same data in the, the neighborhood, but just in different ways or different plugins. So communities can extend their functionality, but still interact with the same data types that already existed. So instead of, you know, inventing a million different definitions of like what an event is or uh, what a message is, uh, you could kind of plug in already existing definitions that the community agree upon and build new applications. So imagining, for example, Facebook uh, having this very large, vast uh, data of events happening, but there is no way to really create other apps to access that and and yeah, interact with the, the same definitions. So, um, so here we, we have the community in charge of the actual database, so to speak. I mean, it's a distributedly shared graph. So, which also means the community can directly change the data, the data types that are in there, right? And you just, we just saw um, different, different app plots, different UIs in the same app flux. I'm, I'm showing the same thing now on my screen. Um, but it doesn't even need to be one app because the data is stored in Atom on my computer. So I can even go to another app. Uh, so we have Perspective, another app. Uh, I see the same spaces I'm in. So this is the one I just joined that's live created. We have the home channel here. Um, Perspective is an app that's meant as a general purpose UI that displays any kind of data, while specific apps like the applets we just saw, the, the Kanban checks for certain patterns in the graph that it can render uh, and same the messages. So we have basically these different graph patterns meaning different things and Perspective is, is meant to display all of them. Oops, gotta reload. Um, so I can browse these, these different, uh, whatever the community comes up with, I can, I can go to a community and find their, their data. But the interesting thing now is because the data is um, hosted by the community, it can basically just add, oh, why is this? Let's see. Oops. Oh, I, oh, I guess the API key. I need, so, uh, I'm in the wrong browser. Let's see. I think I have it in uh, in Brave. Do I have it in Brave? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So this is the same app. It's just a different theme uh, because we have theming. I think we had the the live theme here and an open API key for our AI experiment. Oh, actually, I think I like the dark one better. So. Um, here we go. So we have a little 
um, AI bot built in that we have trained to build this social DNA. Have we explained what social DNA is already? I don't think so. Um, so I don't really think so. <laughs> okay. So these different graph patterns um, that we have just, let's see, where's Flux? Uh, here we go. So looking at the graph, um, Life was just showing, uh, he found the to-do somewhere. So you can, you can already see these different regions in the graph. Those are like expressions you see here. We have a message. This is the body hello. Flux has message. This is maybe the channel. Um, so we have these patterns that, that mean specific things. Um, people in different neighborhoods are up to just use this graph in different ways. Just installing a new, like the Kanban, has its own way of um, using these graph patterns to, to mean something. Uh, and we call that social DNA because it basically encodes the interaction patterns in a community. And um, so the interesting thing about perspective is that we have a bot that can write the social DNA, which is which is uh, a code, prolog code. But we want users to not have to understand coding in order to extend um, their their communication infrastructure using Adam. So uh, I can ask this bot, please, please write a subject class. That's how we call our social DNA classes. Um, and we call a new one proposal. So please write a subject class proposal with um, named options, uh, well, with a property state and named options that make sense in this case. And here we have our AI writing the code, which is a a very abstract high level description of these classes. So here we have the name proposal, we have the state with, you know, came up with pending, approved, rejected, and in progress. And then we can ask it and say, um, okay, please, please add a title, have it be rendered as circles and um, set a fitting icon and then it will go and add something to the code we have our state again some named options here's the title property okay it picked an icon and made it a circle and then i can say great now write this to the sdna to the social dna okay so we just have to wait. The AI is repeating the code again and perspective is taking note. And when this is done, here we go. Our proposal just popped up in our toolbar because it was just added to the social DNA. It's now part of the social DNA of this neighborhood. And um, so I can click this button to create a new proposal. We see it's a circle as requested. We can set the title. Um, Let's see it in flux two. Oops, that should have been an exclamation mark. Um, we can set the state. Um, we we have a selection box here, um, and so yeah, we can go back to flux and um, take a look at our table view, and we just have to do a reload. Go to table, and then we see proposals. So we just have extended the capabilities, not just of perspective, but of our neighborhood and every app like Flux that understands Adam social DNA. So um, it's just, we don't see the proposal here because the thing about Flux is that it has the, I, the concept of channels, which, so perspective does not. Um, I can zoom into a channel and then see what's in the channel, but I've created this proposal outside so I can just drag it into the channel. And if I then go back to perspective, where is it here? Just have to reload, go to the table, proposals, and there it is, there's the proposal. And I can change it here to say rejected. And if I go back to perspective and 
take a look at it. Where is it? There we go. Oops. It's rejected. Cool. Um, live. Did I miss something? I think. Oh, right. We wanted to. We can also show. Maybe see the countdown. Board, exactly. Yeah. The, that's actually where it's really nice. So this is an. Because there's overlap in um, the social DNA, um, the Kanban bot can now also, it, it shows me, I mean, it, it doesn't show the, the task and communities and so on because they don't fit what the Kanban bot needs. The Kanban bot needs something to create these, these different columns. But because the proposal has a state property with named options, um, we now have our named options that the AI invented, pending, approved, rejected in progress as these um, columns and I can use it and just yeah there, we have an UI bug here I think but if I go to perspective I think I can press add card that should actually work add card maybe. okay let's add a pending card oops no that doesn't work maybe it did oh but I can I can change oh I did add cards oh, yeah. but with empty titles Uh, you need to put it in a state. I need to put it in a state too. Okay. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Otherwise, where should it be? And there it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. Um, so what this means, zooming out, we what we have with this social DNA. Um, do we still have it here? Oh no, this got cleared. Um, but we have a very abstract definition of, well, semantic data that um, we use here and we have built quite some tooling around it that um, apps can be built using social DNA. Uh, and we use it as a means for interoperability. We, we, we just showed we have different UIs using the same data in a perspective in a neighborhood and then the social DNA to access it. The next step now with the Synergy engine is to use the social DNA to find data in other neighborhoods. Because Adam is agent-centric, the perspectives and neighborhoods are stored locally on the user's device and the neighborhoods are only shared over currently over Holochain, but as Life said, we can use, um, basically the neighborhood can pick what backend they want to use for their neighborhood. But the main idea is that the data is only shared with the people in the neighborhood so how do you find data? How do you find new communities, new uh, users, uh, other, uh, other people who are maybe using the same uh, languages and the same apps as you do? Um, so in the Quasa Synergy engine, we use this concept of social DNA, which is basically just a graph pattern to um, send out the data, the description of the data we're looking for similar to how we describe what a proposal is or what a task is or what a channel in flux is, namely different patterns in this graph, we can describe anything. Like for instance, we had this example, uh, I'm looking for good rave events in Bristol. So um, I could have social DNA and I could have the AI write social DNA that defines it as an item that is an event, so it has certain edges going off that make it an event. And then we have people attending another edges, pointing to agents, to users that are rave DJs, and so on and so on, like basically describing semantically the data we're looking for, and then sending out this query to my friends, and they can check their local and private data, if they have data that would resolve um, the query. And if not, they can send on the query to their friends and their friends, and this is how, in a distributed fashion, without creating a central server that stores all the data, I can still find the data I'm looking for uh, in a very um, interoperable and flexible way.